Hello, hello, my friends. Dr. Pete here from Dr. Pete's office. Winter is upon us. And with that comes many viral infections, mostly spread via droplets, airborne secretions. Uh, and RSV is the one that, of course, is dominating the news right now. RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus. But this is not the only one that is wreaking havoc on infants, children, and adults right now in this season. There is adenovirus, there's parainfluenza virus, human metanumovirus, I bet you've never heard of that one, influenza, of course, and COVID. So there's a host of viral infections out there. RSV is in the news right now, and, you've, and it is quite um, spreading quite rapidly but it is not the only one, remember that. So how do we prevent these things and what's so special about RSV? Well, respiratory syncytial virus or RSV, um, that can actually be quite dangerous in the first 12 months of life and beyond, but mostly in infancy, it can just create the usual cold symptoms that you're used to with any virus uh, in the winter time with nasal congestion and some cough and kind of uh, misery and some, uh, temperature elevation, you know, some fever, but also it can then stimulate, especially in infancy, bronchospasm or a clamping down of the bronchioles, the muscle, the muscle around the bronchioles um, in the lung tree. So it can cause a bronchiolitis and um, cause infants to have an increased work of breathing. Let me just explain that. The bronchi are the trachea and the main stem, this inverted Y that lead to the lungs, the bronchi. So when we get bronchitis, Itis, the suffix meaning inflammation. Bronchitis, that's inflammation here, and we can get secretions and a productive cough and fever, and that's just no fun. Bronchioles are the tiniest branches of the lung tree down in the lungs. So bronchiolitis is when those tiny branches are inflamed. And in infants and children, when those get inflamed, the muscle, smooth muscle around those little bronchioles, it goes into spasm and it tightens so it makes those airways smaller and it gives an increased work of breathing. And in infants, that increase is manifested as breathing too rapidly, a hacking cough, and sometimes an audible wheeze that you can hear outside the mouth with your ear, like this. <laughs> and when that happens, then infants um, really decrease not just small, mildly decrease, but really decrease and plummet the two favorite things that they have going on, which are, of course, feeding and sleeping. Those go way, way, way down. And for the children that can speak, uh, they're not talking because the increased work of breathing, they're just compensating for that by not speaking and, of course, not wanting to eat and not sleeping at all. How do we prevent RSV or any of the others? Well. A couple of them have vaccines available um, at different age groups, but uh, influenza vaccine exists and the COVID vaccine, as you all know, exists now as well. Preventing RSV and the other airborne viruses. Well, the best we can do is, as you most, most of you know, good hand washing with soap and water, avoiding those who are sick. When you get a notice from preschool or school that RSV is around, uh, just be extra diligent to watch for those signs in your infant or child of increased work of breathing. Most of us big kids can get RSV if we've not had it in childhood so therefore don't have antibodies to it. So we can share that with our children or grandchildren, as it were. For us, it usually gives us a raucous upper airway infection. In other words, just a really bad cold. And with the advent of no masks, uh, of course, the children, infants and up are sharing, uh, you know, infections that we didn't in the era of masking everyone except for the less than two year old. So it's actually to be expected watch for those signs and symptoms of an increased work of breathing for appetite to fall off uh, for sleep to be disrupted and again nasal secretions hacking cough fever or temperature elevation uh, and <gasps> watch for audible wheeze if any of those things happen that's called respiratory distress mild moderate or of course severe um, you need to, to seek attention with your um, pediatrician. And of course, bad enough if an urgent care facility or an emergency department. So until, until the next time, I'm signing off. It's Dr. Pete wishing you all wonderful, happy holidays to come. Ciao. Thanks so much for watching. And please share this video with all of your friends. And subscribe to my channel, Dr. Pete's Office, for more fun. See you next time.